When we buy our clothes, we choose our brands for style, price, comfort, and quality. But when you look at the story behind the label, the people making the clothes come into view. They often work in poor conditions, facing limits on their rights and freedoms every day. Many of us would like to buy clothing that is made under good and safe working conditions. But reliable guarantees are hard to come by in the global apparel industry. One reason is that clothing brands don't usually own their own factories. Clothes are instead produced by many different companies in complex international supply chains. Take, for example, a t-shirt. Between the person who buys the shirt and the people who make it are a shop, a clothing brand, transportation, agents, and, of course, the factories where the t-shirt is made. Assembling a t-shirt involves many workers, who can be spread over multiple factories. More complex clothing can involve even more workers. That's a lot of places where things can go wrong. And that's only one part of the full supply chain. Cotton, for example, is grown on plantations, spun into yarn, dyed, woven, or knit into cloth, which is sent to sewing facilities. That's the supply chain for a single t-shirt a single item in a brand's seasonal collection. But each brand creates dozens or hundreds of designs every season, usually ordered from many different factories. At the same time, each factory can make clothing for dozens of different brands. The end result is a tapestry of diverse and interwoven supply chains. In such a complicated system, how do you begin to make sure that the people making the clothing are treated fairly? Well, Fairwear Foundation focuses on the parts of the supply chains where clothes are manufactured. Many labor violations take place in sewing factories. And as sewing is very labor-intensive, lots of workers are involved. At the heart of Fairwear Foundation's work are eight labor standards, which are based on United Nations principles and cover workers' basic human rights. Employment is freely chosen, meaning it's not forced or coerced. There's no discrimination and no child labor. Workers' freedom of association and the right to collective bargaining are respected. There is payment of a living wage, reasonable hours of work, a safe and healthy working environment, and a legally binding employment relationship that is a fair and legal contract. So, how do these standards work in practice? Sometimes it's quite straightforward. For instance, when fire exits are locked to prevent workers from taking breaks or stealing clothes. Locked exits are a clear violation of the health and safety standard and relatively easy to solve. But in most cases, violations are interlinked and there are root causes beyond the factory's control. For example, a very common problem is excessive overtime. In many garment factories, people work up to 16 hours a day, six or even seven days a week. That's more than 100 hours a week, sometimes for months at a time. Let's think about what that means. If you work for 16 hours, let's say from 7 in the morning until 11 at night, there's no time for family life or relaxation. There isn't even enough time for sleeping. Long hours also affect the quality of the work and also the safety of the workers. By far, the most workplace accidents happen during overtime when workers are tired. So why do people work this long? Sometimes workers are simply not allowed to go home. Almost always, salaries are so low that, without overtime, workers could not afford a place to live, enough food, and other basic needs. So, despite the fact that excessive overtime is dangerous and reduces the quality of the products, there's huge pressure on factories to deliver clothing fast. Otherwise, they'll lose business and workers will lose their jobs. Brands demand short delivery times. They change their orders at the last minute and pay unreasonably low prices, putting huge pressure on wages and working hours. Style changes and peak seasons mean factories are never sure when the next order will come. So they overbook, another cause of overtime. Unpredictable orders also mean that workers are denied contracts or steady work. So excessive overtime is connected to wages contracts, and health and safety, as well as to the way brands do business. Labor standards are connected in many other ways as well. Payment of a living wage is a key issue because it has knock-on effects, for example, on child labor. If parents don't earn enough to live on, guess where the children are likely to head? Probably not to school. 
Likewise, ensuring that workers can form or join a trade union of their choice and bargain collectively means that they can play a primary role in improving factory conditions. It would be great if we could just tell the factories to shape up. But the reality is that factories cannot fix everything on their own. So, who is responsible for making it fair? Well, the factories do have a crucial role to play. They're the ones employing the workers. But brands also play a big role. Along with quality and price requirements, they can also call for decent working conditions. Plus, brands can have a major positive impact on working conditions by paying fair prices, asking for reasonable delivery times, and by providing some security to factories about future orders. So, Fairware Foundation works on a number of levels. We check conditions in factories and production countries, and we look at the way that brands in Europe do business with factories. Fairware Foundation also works with trade unions, labor and women's groups, business associations, governments, and consumer organizations, both in production countries and in Europe, to find solutions that last. Workers themselves can complain directly to Fairware Foundation. Fairware Foundation reports publicly about brand performance, progress in factories, as well as worker complaints. And that's where you come in. Public reporting allows consumers to see what's behind the label and make an informed decision about what clothes to buy. If you'd like to know more, visit fairware.org where you can check which brands we work with and create a shopping list of Fairware Foundation members who sell products in your country.